the gentleman who joins me now uh, talk about a very popular move and a richly deserved opportunity. This guy has been a, a really good coach, a really good man, and just really good for our school system and community for many, many years. And he's now the head coach of McDonough 35, where he's been serving for so many years now and doing so since 2003. Ascending to the position most recently, announced last week, and he is Frank Daggs Jr. Frank, it's so good to have you with us. Welcome to the show, and again, congratulations, my friend. Oh, thank you, Ken. Thank you for everything. Well, well well-deserved. Listen, first and foremost, uh, again, as you said when we spoke last week, you know, it's a great honor. You're really looking forward to it. You wish it would have been under different circumstances, right? Yeah, correct. You know, Coach Reese was a real, real great guy, and, you know, I've been in the same office with him for over 15 years, so... You know, and nothing. We did everything almost together on the field or off the field. So it's going to be, you know, a real, real difference. But uh, I wish it was under different circumstances. But, you know, uh, time, you know, as time goes on, it's going to heal, you know. Well, I know that's got to be strange when <laughs> when you look and he's not there anymore. It's got to be a really right. different experience, right? Right. Yes, it is, man. I went to the office the other day and I, about it again, you know, it's gonna be different. But hey, I understand. We talked about it when we visited last week. But you know, talk about what the Ron Eagle program can be. As we've mentioned, you've been so close so many times, making the semifinals yeah. so many times and coming so close and and not quite getting there. That's the one thing I regret that Wayne wasn't able to get because he deserved it more than anybody. But where can this program go? What can it do in your mind? Well, you know, this COVID deal, uh, you know, I nicknamed this team the COVID team, and everybody, all the kids that were doing it for him, you know, uh, we rallied around back in May and said, uh, Coach, we got to get, get one for Coach, you know, because he's been at it so long and tried, and we got so close many times, and it's time to get over the hump now, you know. Visiting with Frank Daggs, and of course you played the game and your background in St. Augustine. You've been here forever. You understand the dynamic of of how high school sports has such an impact on our community, and more importantly, has such an impact on the lives of young men. It provides discipline, teaching, teamwork, understanding for some a future in the sport. It's so valuable to the young men in our community, isn't it? Yes, it creates a great brotherhood with everybody, man. It, and it's funny you say that because we're going to St. Augustine and knowing so many coaches on, the, on in the city right now, it's like a big another brotherhood, you know, it's like one big family. You know, uh, we got we have we have you know like saying like Marcus Scott. I know Marcus went to Jesuit, and I've been knowing him since he was at Jesuit, you know, and he's over at Destrehan now. And uh, Albert Porter is at Kennedy. We played together on the same St. Al team. Uh, Shane Whitley at Mac Bain, uh played together at St. Al's also, you know. So it's like one big happy family. Busy with Frank Daggs, now the head coach of McDonough 35. All of the, the social issues coming to the forefront in recent weeks, uh, over the last week and a half in particular. And yeah. I think it's brought in more of an awareness to people. And I think it's brought, uh, it's becoming an education. And I think it's something that we all need to be educated about. It's an education to me. It's one of the reasons I'm talking to uh, some friends of mine and prominent African-American coaches on our shows all the time because I think more than anything else, people need to listen and need to understand. And whether you agree with people 100%, 75%, or 50%, when you understand why people are who they are and why they think what they think, then you have a greater chance to to really reach common ground and, and get along with people well. That should be the goal of everyone is to understand each other, to find right. common ground, and to get along. That's <laughs> I just I don't yeah, think correct. that's a very difficult concept. Do you? <laughs> no, not, hey, that's, that's that's the whole thing in a nutshell. You know, I just got off a Zoom call about this. You know, we, we were talking about college athletics and saying that they have over 260 college institutions on all levels and only 40 minority head coaches. And then the other the other guy mentioned that out of 1,200 coordinators, they only have 140 minority co- coordinators. Now, that was the, the numbers that I was like, whoa, you know, I didn't even realize that. So I said, after, you know, I'm going to look up 
myself and, and try to find out some more stuff on it tonight, you know? Well, it's like the NFL with four, four minority head coaches out of 32. Do you think it's subliminal discrimination or do you think it's, it's blatant discrimination? It's hard for me to say because I'm not in the shoes or in the building every day. But I know I've seen and I've heard from going to conventions around the country, AFCA, and I've seen guys go in the interviews and they are the right person for the job. And all of a sudden, I guess their agents or somebody else went on and hired another, another candidate. So you never know the real reason. And I really think, you know, it's going to come out soon because I, I was watching uh, Roger Goddard and all them earlier today about the NFL and stuff. So it's gonna come out. It's gonna come out sooner or later and see what's really going on. You know, it's gonna come to the light. In your lifetime, Frank, have you experienced any kind of mistreatment from law enforcement? Uh, if so, if you're willing to talk about it, feel please feel free to do so. <laughs> or have you seen it uh, in the African American community on more than one I, occasion? I've seen it many times. You know, in the African uh, community, African American community, I seen it many times. But I can remember as a ten year old, I think I was about twelve years old at the time. And me and all my friends, we had a habit of playing basketball in the street. And we had about fifteen or twenty of us. And I grew up in New Orleans East, so uh, we all out there on the summer day. Everybody's having fun, and they had four cars pull up on us from every angle and demanded us to get on the car. When I put your hands on the car, the hot sun is beaming in the hood, and, and it was very hot. And they, they tortured us and talked to us in any kind of way. And mind you, we were all, we were all kids, you know? And they went through a search just for no reason. We were playing basketball. And then about 15 minutes later, the whole neighborhood, all the parents came out in uproar, and then they decided to back down to get out of there, you know? But it was like, why y'all, why y'all messing with us, you know? And I never understood that until I got older. And, you know, and growing up and being an adult now, and if you, now you understand, you, you know, I guess don't really understand why it happened. But in some instances, you kind of understand why they're trying to do it to prevent things. But they're really stereotyping a bunch of us playing basketball, playing football, just having fun, you know? And it was very disheartening at the time. And then... uh Growing up now and going, I know the kids, you know, the kids in New Orleans right now, people on our team, they go through something every every week, there's something going on, you know. And we try to keep them positive and make sure, you know, like I tell them, you come to school to get your grades, play football so you can make a better life for yourself, to go on any college you want and make something great out of yourself, you know. And that's, that's, that's our goal right there, you know, keep them positive, keep them motivated. Does it make you sad, mad, or both? <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> a little bit of both, you know. Uh, it makes you sad because you're still stereotyped or you're still in a situation around your house or in your neighborhood, your community that, you know, law enforcement is really messing with you. And it makes you... Uh, you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say, Ken. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's like a mix, mixed emotions going on when you, you think about it. You know. Yeah, and 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 the fact of the matter is, and I'm not speaking for you, but I know what's in your heart. You know that all policemen aren't bad. In fact, many, if not most, are good people. But unfortunately, you've got bad, just as you have in every aspect of life. That's the right. difficult part: is trying to explain to people. Look. Uh, it's not everybody, especially when, when you're dealing with young people that have experienced discrimination. You got to right. convince them, look, don't judge the cover by its book. Don't judge the book by its cover that not everybody's like that. In fact, it's a minority. Unfortunately, it happens too much. Right. Right. And, uh, you're absolutely correct on that. Uh, and just like I tell the kids, just make sure you do the right thing every day and everything should be good for you. You know, don't get no anything going home or anything around the house. You know right from wrong. You know you you know make the right, right judgment. Final thought: Do you think that what's transpiring in our country right now, and the world for that matter, will will make a real change? Do you think that we're actually making progress, and that we're going to see a more harmonious world with people accepting each other for who they are, not what they look like or where they come from? 
I hope it does, man. I, it, it, it's making me sick to my stomach when I turn on the TV. The last three, well, first of all, the last three months was about COVID. And then now the last week, a week and a half, is about protests. And, you know, bad enough, you know, I'm a football guy, so I'm waiting, I'm waiting for practice. I'm waiting to watch football, wait, watch sports on TV and stuff. But everything on the news is about, you know, what's going on, you know, current events. And it's like, man, you know, I hope everybody open their eyes and see what needs to happen, you know. It would be one big happy family, brotherhood, and everything else. And go on with life. And don't st- stop judging the books by the cover, like you say, you know. And learn the people for who they are and be successful. And I'll be happy, you know. That's as we should be. Just like you and I, you're a good man and a friend and somebody I have great admiration for and somebody I'm really very happy for. We're always happy to see people get their just due, but it, but it's even better when you see a class act that you really admire get that opportunity, and, and that's the way I feel about you, Frank. Very happy for you. Congratulations, and continue to make a difference in the lives of young people because you've done that already to a major degree, and I know you're going to make more of a difference in, in teaching young men correctly and teaching young men to respect other people regardless of of how people treat them it's what we all have to do yes sir king yes i will that's what we all have to do and that's how that's the reason why we've been placed on earth to make a difference some way somehow keep doing it buddy thank you you here thank you buddy thank you for everything my pleasure frank frank daggs of mcdonough 35